Good evening and welcome everybody to another edition of the Music and Mixing Show. I'm your host, DJ Michael Joseph. And tonight's going to be kind of cool because we're going to talk about all kinds of software. Uh, more specifically, the best software, dot, 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 for you. So if you've never seen the show before, we always take a couple minutes at the beginning. Welcome everybody, kind of see where everybody's tuning in from. Uh, Willie D, what's going on? How, how are you? We are on nine different places tonight. So no matter whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitch, I think it's on Twitch tonight. Uh, if you say something, hello, I can see what's going on. We're going to take a couple minutes, welcome everybody, and then we're going to get into the show about uh, uh, what is the best software. And uh, I know you guys know that I lean a certain direction, but this show is going to be a little bit more about leaning that direction. It's going to be about other software, too. So just seeing who's tuned in. And like I said, if you're tuned in, uh, do a shout-out. Tell me where you're from because we get a lot of international viewers on this show, and I kind of like to see where everybody's viewing from. I hope everybody's having a good uh, fall. I, I understand there's a lot of need for uh, homecoming-type DJs. Uh, Facebook user, hi, MJ from Facebook. Uh, some Facebook people, we can't see who, who they are. Uh, Ken uh, from Florida, just he's from Facebook, and we got him. But some Facebook users, for some reason, it only says Facebook user. So I definitely want to say hello to him. Howie, Dark Star, what's going on? Howie, uh, let me know in the chat if you could please if you have a show tonight so that I can do a shout out to for people to watch your show tonight because I didn't get the check to see if you had a show tonight after my show but howdy howie it's going down um it has been an interesting summer for me I've really got to enjoy kind of you know having fun this summer and we're getting back in the fall and doing a little bit more normal things DJing wise and stuff um, uh, Willie D, I had to move my chat over here. Willie D from South Carolina, hello, welcome. Um, it, it's been a good year for me, DJing wise. Even though I still miss 2020, that was fun just to sit at home and never have to leave. But it's the real world where we got to get out and do things, and uh, I, I feel very blessed with some of the gigs that I get to do right now. Uh, all of the places that I DJed prior to COVID have all either shut down or did not bring back entertainment at all. Um, so all the places I'm at are new, which is kind of interesting. You know, you know, your mindset was on a certain thing and then you're just a different direction. Um, tonight we are talking about software and finding the best software, which I can tell you what it is, but it may not be for you. So that's why it's titled Best DJ Software for You. Uh, check out anybody else is in the chat. Feel free to do a shout out. We're going to get started here in about a minute and talking about things. And I, I really hope you guys have a lot of questions tonight <clears throat> uh, to bring into this. I'm going to tell you what brought me to this topic tonight, which I thought was kind of interesting. <clears throat> and I thought about doing a video on it alone, but I decided to kind of handle it here and I still may do a video on it later. But we're going to talk about a couple things like that tonight. <clears throat> Pardon me. So see where everybody's tuning in from. They said we're on nine different places tonight. Um, let me think here. Wait to see um, uh, see if Howie can let me know if there, he has a show after tonight. And I can direct you guys to that. Um, but like I said, we're here, we're here tonight. It's going to be a little bit of a casual show. I do have the decks set up here. Um, DJ Steve, what's going on? Oh, Facebook user. For those of you who don't know, the, it, it, here at Disc Jockey News, we have a, a drinking game that anytime somebody says this software, this DJ software, you have to take a drink. I didn't say it, so you don't have to take a drink. Uh, Steven from Savannah, what's going on? Uh, but if you have a small bladder for some reason, no need to, to do the drinking game every time that is said. But we are going to talk about all different software tonight. Um, trying to keep an eye on the chat, see what everybody's doing. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate that. Let, let me know also what you kind of want for this fall. Uh, I know my virtual DJ shows do really well, but I, I think I should probably do more than just shows about virtual DJ or answering questions, even though I'm still going to do them. Um, see what you guys want. You know, like I said, we're back to fall, back to a little bit different routine for me. And I kind of want to see um, where I go with this this year, because it has been a very different year on uh, DJ News because uh, I cover one of my big things I do here at Disc Jockey News is cover the technology and there has not been much technology to report on. Uh, we had some software stuff. James Brady, what's going on? Um, 
Howie Darkstar. Yes, uh, for, I'll, I'll definitely say this again. Uh, for those of you uh, who know over on... Um, Oh, the replays at 10 p.m. Okay, I'll say that again. Uh, why why school dances have changed, which we kind of touched a tiny, tiny bit on that on Monday night's uh, chat show. Um, but Howie and the gang are going to get into it. Brian and Jay Brennan, uh, uh, those guys are going to get into it a little bit more. Um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Willie D said, I know you lean towards virtual DJ, still Serato user here, just need to revamp. They got compliant we're going to talk about all of the different things we're not just going to talk we're going to figure out what's best for you because just because i say something's good it doesn't mean it's right for you and that's kind of what i want to get through tonight on that um hello robin thank you for joining in um trying to keep up with technology in the field that's absolutely right that's one of the biggest things that is why i think i do well in this industry is that i love technology and i love to kind of watch stuff that happens in the, in the technological world all right, so I put that there to remind me that uh, Howie shows coming up at 10 p.m. tonight, the, the rebroadcast. Um, but you can still join us over at uh, D. <laughs> I always forget what it is. DJNTV forward slash DJNTV.com forward slash chill. Uh, the chill room. Uh, pretty much you can just come and hang out there and talk about DJ things, ask questions. It's just a hangout. All right, so let me get started here on how tonight's topic came about. Like I said, uh, I want welcome. I want this to be a discussion with this, so that you guys can you know have questions about different things. But I'm going to be talking about all different software. And what brought me around to this is something that Virtual added that involves other software, and I thought it was kind of cool. So I'm going to switch screens here. Um, let me do the zoomed in one here. So if I bring up this menu, uh, is that menu in the right spot? All right, so this is the different mapping. So I, I have the DDJ uh, SB3 plugged in right now, uh, but there, you know, because these are the mappings for the different buttons. But one of the things that you can do, and a lot of people use often, are the keyboard on your laptop. Those keys can be programmed and MIDI mapped and used, which a lot of you probably do on a regular basis. Um, one of the things that Virtual did that I thought was kind of cool is under keyboards. If you just do keyboards, now you have a choice of the factory default legacy, which is their old mapping, uh, factory default, which is the new mapping, and I'll show you a little bit about that. But they also added record box uh, keyboard shortcuts, which I, I, I thought that was cool, and Serato keyboard shortcuts, so that if you are a user of one of those and a lot of DJs switch back and forth between softwares, you can put the keys mapped to what it is on Serato or Rekordbox while you're on virtual, and that will help you in any kind of thing you're doing. They were talking about it in the sense of a transition, that if you want to transition from Serato to Virtual DJ, which is fine, which I would recommend that you know that. But if you're a person that maybe uses uh, uh, Virtual for maybe just karaoke, this is going to give you an option that if you have to use it for something like that, but your regular one is Rekordbox or Serato, you can have the keyboard mapping uh, on your laptop to match and then I made my own as always and we'll talk about that a little bit later but that basically is what got me started with looking at all the different software and the fact that they do kind of cross paths now a lot um, you can find on all the software the ability to uh, transfer playlists cue points all kinds of stuff like that will just go from one to the other so if you are a person that uses multiple software uh, it really makes it easy nowadays and if any of you are old enough to remember what it was like at the beginning uh, nothing spoke to anything so you know once you got in an ecosystem you couldn't have the option to get out of it but now they're giving you the option for both so we're gonna talk a little bit tonight about all the different ones and what might benefit you because there's a bunch of different types of DJs out there and there's a bunch of different a bunch of DJs that do different jobs that they might use different software for different things but like I said that's what got me started because I thought that was kind of interesting I mean I've always had Serato mapping in my uh, mini mapping thing but this is factory from virtual they put that in there now so all you have to do is click um, one of the cool things they also added I'm going to switch over here again left screen is that if I hold down the Alt button on my keyboard, uh, or is it Double Tap? Oh, I got to go over here. Alt. It will then show me the shortcuts 
that are set up for different things. So right now, I think this, this, yeah, because I have my other shortcuts come in here, and they will show you on your thing what what they are. So if your keyboard, if you hold down the Alt and re release the Alt, it goes away. But if you double tap, it stays up there. And so I'm going to shut that off, and then I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to go keyboards, and I'm going to switch over to Serato, Serato default. Close that out. Double tap. Oops. Uh, okay, so it doesn't show you Serato. I thought that showed you Serato's. Boy, do I feel dumb now. Um, keyboard, Serato default compatible, record box compatible, closing. Unless that is another shortcut. <laughs> I thought that was for this. Um, there's got to be a shortcut in there. Apologize about that. Um, yeah, uh, for those who said, said start late, I always, I always let the intro run for two minutes. And then we talk to about six or seven after on intros, and then we start the show, just so that you know. Um, but it gives you the option to pick those there. So if you have different ones, my custom one that I did on there is a couple different things. So I took the factory default that is the new factory default of virtual, and I did a couple things. So that if I have a song on this deck and I do control shift, it will clone it. Um, it's supposed to clone it. Um, and I am having so much trouble with this stuff lately. That's mine. And then control shift. I, we did the show last week. Control shift. That's a clone deck. Yeah, so don't know why it's not working this week. Maybe it has to be playing. Make sure the volume's down so we don't do anything. Play, control. There, yeah. So it has to be playing to control to do the clone deck. So I can kill that, and then I can clone it back if I want, and it clones it back. One of the other things I did was I did Alt, Shift, and then the right arrow will empty the right deck. Alt, Shift, which that, that brings that up, and then right arrow empties it. Alt, Shift, left deck empties the left deck. And these are just little shortcuts that I put in there. There are different ones for Serato and all of those, but you have the option now to play around with that in virtual. So that that took me to the next thing where, okay, so I know a lot of DJs that rely on their keyboard for doing things, and there are also DJs out there that don't even use a controller and are on the keyboard or mouse all night long. So what benefits you from these different softwares for different types of DJing? So let's look at that obviously obvious one first. Um, of the person who relies on the keyboard for different things. Um, I know a lot of uh, a lot of Serato guys do the instant doubles or it's called cloning on here on virtual and record box and I'm if I'm correct record box and Serato use the same keyboard shortcut to do that. Um, there are a lot of different things uh, uh, within that and if you are a DJ that is active on your key pat your your laptop's keyboard as you're DJing, you might want to think about uh, if your software lets you customize that. Um, some guys are very happy with the Serato. You can remap the Serato. You can remap Rekordbox. You can remap Virtual. But that's something to think about, that if you use that, uh, how does that benefit you and can you change stuff up? As far as I know, you can't add other MIDI mappings to Serato. I think you can with Rekordbox. So in picking software for certain things, um, you kind of have to think what's best for you. Um, again, I'm not here to push one over the other. I'm trying to help you kind of understand what you're using or maybe uh, take some of these tools that you don't use. Let's say you use Serato, but you never thought of emptying decks or loading decks or nudging or anything like that. Um, it's a good thing to get used to because I know people who have had equipment crash and they were able to finish the night by doing stuff on the keyboard and, and, and earn their paycheck. Um, it also depends on what kind of controller you have that has a lot of buttons. I've programmed my Denon 7000 with all kinds of buttons on there, so there's all kinds of shortcuts for me on mine. So if I am here on this and I want to type here, okay, someone would normally have to take their mouse, point it up there, and type something right there. Um, with mine, I have a button on the controller that highlights that. So I just tap the button and start typing. 
And if I want to jump down to this area right here, I have a button that does it here. And then I can just scroll through it. And another button that lets it jump over here or over to the side list. And I can scroll through the side list. And I have a lot of those shortcuts on my controller as opposed to the keypad. But that's not necessarily um, a good or bad thing. It's just your preference. And I want you to think about that. Um, trying to keep an eye on the chat here. Um, so, uh, as Alex said, he loves uh, quick keys. I use my keyboard more than my controller. A lot of guys do. A lot of guys are up here all night on that, on that, and that's nothing wrong with that. So, again, they're all tools to, to kind of see what works best for you. Um, that was a big thing with me, uh, why I switched from Strata Virtual DJ. Uh, I love customizing and mapping. A um, uh, lot, of, lot of input there. Appreciate that. Um, but you kind of take that a little bit further um, to the types of DJs. Again, because we're talking about types of DJs and what software you would use. There are DJs out there that never plug in a controller. They have their laptop into an audio mixer, and they do everything from there. So you have to think about the keyboard shortcuts for you that might help you. Even if you're doing auto mixing, um, you have shortcuts that you're able to, instead of mouse over or do something, that you're able to do next song because there are... Uh, mappings for next song, I think, on this. Um, mix now. Yeah, so right now the back button on virtual does a mix now on the auto mix. And as you can see, there's a lot of looping things. So there are things that you may do on a regular basis that this could help you if you are a non... If you're a person who DJs straight from a laptop and certain softwares are going to give you more options with that type of DJing than others. Um, I am also want to take further out on this about uh, this software, and I'm going to try not to say it very much. This software, um, Algorithms DJ software, Tractor, and I keep, keep forgetting to throw in Tractor. I just don't know too many people that use Tractor, and that's why I don't talk about it a lot. It's an it's a awesome software. Um, they went through some changes a while back with ownership, and it kind of changed some stuff. And uh, I think they're getting their feet back under them now. Um, they've always been solid. There's, they've never slipped. But what I'm saying is, is they went through a little bit of uh, uh, you know a, a change up in there. And I think that it, it it I I think it hurt them a little bit. And it may have just been on marketing or something like that. But um, that's something to think about with those is how much of that you use on the keyboard like that. Um, also, with a deck layout, uh, let me go back to here. Some guys want, let me just throw two random songs up here. Uh, some guys want the horizontal uh, uh, waveforms. Other guys only want the, the, the up and down, the vertical. Um, let me go to skin here. Uh, variations, we can do uh, too small. And too small will get us no circles. So some guys, also with Serato, you can switch that out. So it, if you are a person that, that doesn't need the little uh, record spinning, uh, there's a lot of adjustments that you can do. Um, someone, in, I'm checking the chat there, sorry. Um, but there's a lot of adjustments you can do with all the softwares. I know <clears throat> DJs that mix every kind of Serato, uh, horizontal, vertical only, uh, they're compact version um, and they all they're all incredible DJs they just prefer their software to look a certain way for their their I guess you what would you call it uh, uh, user preference uh, work workflow um, I like mine uh, it's one of the reasons why I use this skin is because it gives me a lot of room down here to see songs and I like to do that because I'm running through songs you know doing a search of something like I go you know 100 uh, dash 1005 or let's go 105 um, we're gonna go uh, uh, 2010s uh, pop urban remix so I've, I've nailed down my, my search to that and let's say it's a bigger search and I'm having to scroll so let me say I just want to take off the pop or take off the remix on that it's gonna give me a lot more so I have a lot of scrolling to do and I want to see everything that I can to kind of figure out what I want to do there. And that is uh, a, an option that you have uh, with a certain skin. Um, Record box kind of has its set skin, but there are adjustments. 
Serato, again, has certain setups, but they're not necessarily different skins. Virtual has an endless amount of skins, more than I can ever even tell you. They're too many almost. And that, that I, I want to emphasize this right now. There are some people that do not like Virtual because of its custom, how customizable it is. They don't want to have to think about it. They just want to plug it in, run it. They don't want to do any customization. So if you're a person that is like that, Serato might be for you just for that purpose alone that it's exactly the same. Also, a lot of reasons why guys choose Serato is that they are DJing with other DJs. And a lot of DJs use Serato, so they, if they're going to their buddy's uh, event, whatever it is, and DJing on his system, they want to know what's going on. The software, they want everything to be exactly the same place to place. So if you are a person that does work with other DJs like that, uh, Serato could be your choice on that for, for doing that. Um, I know guys that use the algorithm DJ uh, for auto mixing because they like the way it auto mixes. Virtual has an auto mix. Uh, Serato doesn't have an auto mix, but they have an auto play. So that means it'll just start playing the next song. There's no mixing, but it'll continue playing a playlist. Uh, Record Box does stuff like that, that you can choose what type of mix you want it to do across. Um, so there are things to think about that. And then this software, again, I'm trying not to say it a lot tonight. Um, it it is an auto mix software that you have. So if that's something that you need, like let's say you need to be out on the floor, those are softwares that you kind of need to think about a little bit. Um, this past week, and I'm gonna open it, and I hope that it opens correctly with virtual uh, running, um, is that Denon's engine software has now become engine DJ, not engine prime software. It's now engine DJ which it's actually a separate entity from Denon now. But the software only works on certain Denon things. So that's that's one of the weird things. Let me find the software here, open it up, and I'll try to move it over to the left deck if I can. It may just freeze my entire system up because I have both of them open. I don't know what it's going to do. It's still opening. Initializing, it's saying. And it's opening, and we'll put it over here. And we will show the left screen. And this is it now. So if I go into folders, I'm gonna to have to go way down into some folders here because I did not I do not have anything here that's mapped in any sort of way whatsoever. I mean I didn't have them scan any files, sorry. Um, so we're gonna pick some songs here. And if we load them up here and load them up there, it is now DJable, fully DJable software. It originally, same way with Rekordbox. When Rekordbox came out, it was a music management software that then became a DJ software. When years ago, Denon had their own music management software that now then became so many steps above Engine software, Engine Prime is what it was called. It's now called um, Engine DJ, and it is a fully DJable program on any of their Prime systems and the uh, 8000, the Denon 8000. So you can plug this in and DJ from this software with, with those controllers. They are going to be adding more soon, but this again, they're integrating stuff like being able to take playlists from other types of software. You're able to create uh, thumb drives so that if you DJ on like uh, um, uh, their SC 6000s or something like that or or even like Pioneer stuff you are able to take this and export a fully playable thumb drive in those other things but this is this is a fully operating um, DJ software now and they just released that this week um, it also oh, it is playing it's not connected to the controller but it is playing and that is just kind of like what it does there. Um, that's all I can say about that. So you now have that option that you've never thought of is the Denon stuff. Again, if you have any other controller, it cannot be used on them at this time, but they are doing that. Um, I have used the, the Engine Prime to create sets for when I DJ in the Denon booth at the DJ Expo because I have to create the sets in Prime to then put them on a thumb drive to use them in a Prime, one of the Prime systems at the show. Um, but this allows both. So I could put together my set here 
take that, even though their stuff still allows, no, don't get me wrong, I can plug in virtual into the den and stuff. I can I, I can plug in Serato to the den and stuff, but I also can plug in this now on the computer to the den and stuff. And it's kind of interesting. Um, look at some chats here. Uh, someone said they don't think they've ever heard of it. Um, I don't, you want to say the other software. Are you saying, why am I not saying this software? Is that what you're saying? Uh, because we have a drinking game. Anytime somebody says this software, you have to take a drink. So I'm trying to limit people so I don't over overdo their bladders tonight. Um, uh, again, you can ask questions. I'm looking through the chat here. People keep asking me for auto-tune when I'm doing karaoke. Been trying to think of the best way of doing that. You can in virtual map through the mic. You have to then set the mic up to then map through and add uh, the auto-tune VST to virtual and and turn it on for the mic uh, but you can do that 100% virtual is a drag and drop with any VST that you would use in like Ableton or something like that and uh, like I said you have, you'll map your mic because 99% of all controllers it the mic runs on its hardware it does not go through the software okay virtual will let you run the mic through the software if you want and then add your effects in the software um, some I have seen are a little bit delayed, but with an with an auto tune that actually it, it works to the benefit of that. And I don't mean like this long delay behind it, but I mean it's 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 minuscule. It probably no, most people wouldn't notice, but for an ear like mine, you hear it. But that is definitely a way with virtual you can do that. Um, I believe also algorithms DJ. Like I said, I know a lot of guys that like that for karaoke. And there's also another karaoke software out there that I don't remember its name that I think it has the ability to do that too. Um, let me see here. Um, Juan says, what is the shortcut to the search bar? Where can I learn that script? Um, do I have it on... I would have to open up let me think. Let me see if I can find that real quick for you. Uh, yes, I want to shut that down. We're going to go to left screen, and I'm going to go here. And I want to go show all controllers. And then we're going to go see if my Denon 7000 is in here. Maybe the stock one's in there. Um, oops, it's not the one I'm looking for. Uh, oops, go north to D for Denon. Top. No, my mine my cut my, there. There's my custom mapping, so it would be one of the. Um, what is that called? I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what I'm searching through a little bit there. Um, so it is one of the. Um, what do they call it? The area load back, those are that's where it's at right here. It's in these. I have so much mapping on mine, it's not even funny. Um, play count, song title. It's in one of these. Sort area. Not sort. What is it called? It's those buttons there that where you are choosing forward, backwards, that sort of thing. Um, I'm trying to think what that's called, and I, I it's going to be here because this is my custom mapping. Um, uh, load decks, here we go. It's in this section here. If I can get this stretched out a little bit, it's not it's not a small thing. So um, sort area, sort back. Load sort, sort panel. Uh, go ahead and throw some questions out there uh, while I'm looking for this. Uh, but I, I want to show him that if I can find it. I can't remember what key it's what it's called. Um, but you're basically just highlighting. Um, is it folder? It's not folder. What is it? Filter, deck select. Um, Side list, search bin, browse. Here it is. 
Brow scroll, brow push. I think it's brows push. So that's that's the 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 load right there for it. Um, it's holding load browser enter, and it it's I think that's it because it's a weird named button. And if I had it, if I had the seven thousand hooked up, I could press the button. Uh, give me I think I can actually find that here. Hold on. Um, look for the uh, thing's name. Uh, looking for uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to throw that in here. Um, And we're going to look for a picture of the 7,000. And we're going to look for a large picture of the 7,000. And then we're going to zoom in on the picture of the 7,000. Um, open image in new tab. So it is the back button. That is my highlight button, the back button. So if we go back to the keys here, and it would be back. So there we go. All you do is you, it, that's pretty simple, is uh, it, when I hit that back button, uh, the code is search, and it highlights the search field when I press that button. So all I have to do is start typing once I press that button. And I, like I said, I just simply mapped that button to do that. Uh, I actually, on mine, I have all of these doing different things on here in both regular mode and shift mode. Um, on the load button, when I press down the select load, it loads it to the deck on this side. And if I hold shift, it will then load it into my, um, I'm zoomed in too far there, apologize. Um, yeah, if, if I, the, it, all of these are mapped uh, on mine to do different things. And if I hit that button, it loads it to the deck. And if I hold shift and hit that, it'll throw it into the side list. And I'm able to um, have it in my side list. All right, so back to questions. I'm sorry I derailed there on that, but that's simply all you have to do on that one. Uh, it took me a minute to find the button. Like I said, each one you kind of have to find the button and then find the code that does that, and search was the code that does that. So back to any questions you have there. Um, what do you think of Mix Emergency? Um, it's good for what it is. It's very good for what it is. Virtual does have its own version of that. Actually, two versions. It's called... Um, uh, televisual and telemedia and it does all kinds of stuff like that on there um again you have to find what works for you and a lot of people really like mix emergency and if that's software that you use if you're already in the serato and you want to use that um it and if you've never let me put it this way if you've never used it it's a really solid addition to add to, to serato i mean really you do pay for it but it is absolutely worth it 100 percent um Solid. If you don't have it, at least get it and try it. Um, down here, Mega Seg. Oh, I said it. Mega Seg. We all have to take a drink. Um, it is not a music. Yeah, it's a music mixing software. Basically, what it does is it it is connectable to certain controllers, but for the most part, people who use it just put playlists together and then it auto plays. And and I know a lot of guys that DJ weddings. There was a company here in the city, I don't know if they do now, but about 10 years ago I was talking with them and they're a multi-op and they required all their DJs to DJ with this. Uh, you could not use your own stuff, you had to use theirs and theirs was that and that's the only way if you were gonna DJ with them, that's the only way you could DJ with them is use that. Um, um, someone says, can you talk about the new keyboard overlay with virtual? Yes, I can. It is kind of neat. I have not dove into it because, like I said, I have a lot of my customized stuff, so I don't dip too far into um, other things. But if I'm here and I double tap on uh, the Alt button, it will bring this up, and it will show you what the shortcuts are. Now, it does not have my Control-Shift um, other one there, um, so I can't see it. It's non-clickable, but it does tell you what they are. So it'll switch your pad pages uh, on on that, um, which if let me show that right there, that should do this. Yeah, so that'll 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 cycle through the pad pages by hitting uh, the what is that comma comma and quote no that's small quote and big quote double quote and you cycle through them like that, which is kind of neat because if you want to do some certain things, uh, it's a lot easier than going up here and doing this and and doing stuff. So you if you know your shortcuts, there's a lot there. If you're mixing, there's a nudge right and left that if you um, want to nudge it forward uh, to make a song mix and you don't have anything, you can do that up there. 
uh, there is a sync button up there if you want to sync something. Um, but just double tapping that, and I thought it did it with the Serato also, but apparently it does not. Um, but uh, which I don't know why it doesn't, but it just is. It's not going to give me that right there. So if we go to keyboard and we go to uh, Serato compatible and close that. Yeah, there it is. I, I thought it did. Um, it tells you some of the stuff with Serato, but not all of them are there. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, again, Serato, I think Serato also has the control shift to do, no, it's control shift right, I think. It's something shift right does the um, clone deck or instant double to that deck. And we'll go to record box now, keyboard, uh, record box. Um, so no, that doesn't work the same apparently. Yeah, so that's record box. I have not dove into any of them because, like I said, I do my own custom ones, so it is not just that. Like I said, I do my own. Um, go back to the Serato one and see if I can make it do anything. Yeah, so there's some Serratos. Um, we're looking at the uh, factory default now with, with virtual, and there's a lot there in the factory default with virtual, uh, which is slightly different from the factory default legacy. And then there's my one that has all my edits on it and I'm actually I'm actually playing with it more too there's a lot more that I've done with mine recently uh, I don't know if that was all the questions you wanted there let me know if that is we'll move on um, still got plenty of time for questions uh, hey MJ I used the 7000 the other night uh, for the first time and I could not turn off the echo effect in the microphone uh, it's a button on the on the top right uh, you you turn it on or off per deck so if I still have that open so right here on this side over here, if I can zoom that in, and then I move this this way, um, your echo effects right here. Echo uh, for uh, mic one on and mic two, echo right there, echo. So you can have it on if you want, and uh, the echo for both mic one and two are there, and you empty it, but that's all it is. Uh, it is a hardware thing unless you somehow have programmed it through your, your software. But the mic stuff, uh, headphones, and a couple other things are all hardware related in uh, uh, most controllers. All right, there. Moving on. Um, I haven't delved into that either. I didn't realize uh, it was non clickable, kind of useless. Uh, it's new. Like I said, it only came out this week, like Monday, I think it was. Um, there's really no use for it if you know your keyboard shortcuts. Absolutely. I know people that have, because uh, you can go get overlays made, and they have, uh, uh, you know, like the the, uh, um, the keyboard protectors with their shortcuts overlaid so that if they are somewhere and it crashes that they have to use the keyboard, they pull out their keyboard overlay, and it has their shortcuts on there. Um, like I said, I only use the empty deck. And, and clone is about all I ever use on the keyboard, but it's nice to have there if you need it. Um, also, again, certain buttons, if you're one person that does the auto mix, stuff like that. But like I said, there's a lot more out there than just the main softwares. Give stuff a try. Um, a lot of the stuff allows you to have free uh, testing of different things. Um, take that advantage and use it for a while and just see, because you might find something you like. Um, is there any DMX lighting control update on what? the uh, On the new I'm going to say it right now here not engine prime engine DJ it does give you lighting control on those um, which I think is really cool so with the news that's one of the big pushes they did on the new, the new engine DJ software's lighting control you can control it on a virtual you can control it on Serato you can control it on record box all of them have some sort of uh, lighting control uh, with them I've not dove into that because I I I DJ clubs and bars, and 99.99% of the time, um, I don't touch lights. I don't take lights. Um, I've had my DJ equipment out this year a couple of times, and that's a couple of times more than I've had it out in, in years. So I just don't do a lot of those types of gigs. Um, Peter the Hubcap, dude, what's going on? Welcome. Um, lighting control, Amazon sells the overlays. There are also other companies out there that will do custom overlays if you want that. Um, I use the shift left, shift right arrow to load the decks. There you go. Uh, 
And that was useful, he said. Cool. Um, again, if you have any, uh, I also want you guys to give me inputs on on topics you want for shows. I know I've covered everything a zillion times, and there's a good chance I've talked about what's the best DJ software for you before. I thought this one was a little fresh because the software, I think, if you look in the past three years, has gone through a lot of changes. You know, stems with certain things. Serato has just grown. Uh, 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 exponentially on the amount of equipment that it used because you know you look five years ago you couldn't use Serato on a lot of controllers they had a very limited amount if you go back before that you could only use it on uh, uh, the SL boxes but a lot of that's grown Serato is opening up to a lot of things I heard they are working on a mobile version of Serato so that you'd be able to plug in with like an iPad and DJ off an iPad with a controller and your own Serato I'm pretty sure Virtual's working on that also. I really think that tablets or phones are going to be more of what we use in the future. Everybody, like I said, I've seen when people say no one will ever DJ with CDs and people DJ with CDs and then no one will ever DJ with the computer and then people DJ with computers. No one will ever DJ with the controller and people DJ with controllers. So change in our business happens. Um, whether you want to embrace it or not, it's entirely up to you, but expect it because it, it's going to happen. And I really think because this next generation... Uh, a lot of those guys and girls do not have laptops. They they go off of mobile devices of some sort. Uh, they'll add a keyboard to a mobile device, and that is their computer pretty much full time. Um, so we're going to see a lot of that come over to our world, where apps and stuff on powerful tablets are going to be kind of become the norm. And I think I'm okay with that. As as um, solid state drives get bigger, you know, imagine having a two terabyte in a tablet. And why would you carry, you know, a, a big laptop if you can have a simple tablet with with a, a flat fold uh, uh, keyboard of some sort um, with two terabytes of music, and or just a simply, you know, maybe say a half a terabyte on that, and you have your little external uh, five terabyte SSD stuff like that. Uh, I think that's where the future is going to go, and um, I see a lot of this really going that way, and I think people need to kind of. Uh, not be afraid of it. Uh, you know, adopt it when you're ready, but don't be afraid of it. But I, I really want to encourage you to look at other software out there. Um, like I said, all of them will let you try them out. Uh, I, like I said, I know a lot of DJs that use one software for one type of DJing and other software for another, and that works for them. Other people, they only want to use one thing. Um, I like virtual because I can change it, and every so many years it gets changed up for me. Uh, I like that. I like how easily it is. I can, like all those little shortcut mappings I told you, how easily they are. Um, stuff like that. Um, James Bradley says, I'm still using the Pioneer CDJ2000 set. Been thinking about getting some more uh, compact, easier to transport. Um, that's the other thing that I think we're going to see in the future. Stuff that is the size of like the CDJ2000s and the 3000s and the Nexus system. They're bigger because people want to have that room to work, but I think it's going to get much lighter. Uh, so you're going to have, instead of having a 30-pound controller, you're going to have a 30-pound full setup with a full-size mixer and two full-size turntables. Um, there's just a lot that technology is going to bring our way once once they get all the ships unloaded out, out in the ocean with our stuff sitting on it. Um, just to let you know, people I've talked to uh, are saying, you know, don't look for anything new uh, from companies until spring. Um, I do online guitar center, uh, uh, DJ classes for Guitar Center, and I get to see in their uh, stock. And I look to see if there was any uh, uh, 1,000 SRTs. And there are zero Serato 1,000 SRTs in any Guitar Center store or any Guitar Center warehouse. Zero. Um, there was about 600 and some Rain 1s, so if you want a Rain 1, they are available. Um, but uh, the SRTs are absent right now, uh, but they're coming from what I understand. But again, uh, tonight's about software, and a lot of those use a lot of... That's the other thing. I think I need to put this into your head. Just because someone says, oh, I got a new Serato controller, or someone Pioneer come out with a new Serato controller, does not mean that it only works with Serato. Virtual works with almost absolutely everything. Serato is open way up to so much more. Recordbox can work with just about every single thing out there. So if you have a software you like, don't think that you can, oh, I can't buy that controller because it's a, it says Serato on it. That does not mean it only works with Serato. That means that company is paid to have their name on that and probably given you uh, a chance to, to, to buy the software if you're new. Um, 
which is a great deal, don't get me wrong, but don't ever think you can't use a controller because it says Serato controller, record box controller, whatever. There's very few that are limited, like the S the 1000 Pioneer DDJ 1000 will work with virtual or record box and the DDJ 1000 SRT will work with virtual DJ or Serato. There are things out there like that, but uh, whatever you like to use, uh, don't think that you're, you're stuck with that one. I think it's a very impor important part to say on that. Um, let me know what you think of these topics that I pick and what you want. Like I said, I have, uh, I brought out the, the little uh, uh, SB, oh, that, that camera's frozen. We'll fix that camera, hold on here. My camera's frozen. And we'll do that, and we'll do that, and then we'll come back to that, and hit OK, and then we'll be back, and it, we're back. So if you wanted any mixing things, you could do that. And I also keep in mind that um, I, I purchased this uh, uh, a few weeks ago and ended up winning also an online auction for one. So I will have, I have two of these now, no joke. The other one's still literally sitting here in the box, uh, here in the studio, Just it just came. Um, so if you are interested, in an SB3, um, I will have the one I want at the auction up for sale soon. Uh, hit me up privately if you want that. And I also will have a uh, Pioneer headphones because I want a set of those in auction too. So there you go. Which is the best DJ software to use as a professional DJ? Uh, whatever works best for you because they all work very well. You have to figure out, uh, uh, Michael asked that on, on the thing there, um, you have to figure out what works for you. Um, I like virtual because it is completely unlimited. It doesn't let it doesn't hold me back from anything. Uh, like I said, a lot of guys use Serato because they DJ with other DJs that use Serato, so they want to be able to jump on and off different systems and have the and know exactly what's going on. Not to go, oh gee, how does your software work? They're going to use the same. They want to do exactly the same thing. Uh, Record Box, uh, it, it it started out as a music management software and has really grown uh, in what it can do. Uh, but it also has certain limitations that may not matter to you, but but to me, I'll be like, oh, I can't use that. But you go like, no, this is for me. So you kind of have to see what you want and what kind of DJ you are and what you do, because that is going to determine what you need. If you just press play, pretty much anything will work, including some of the really, uh, uh, the real non known ones, you know, away from the big three. Uh, this one also does a lot of playing. We're not going to say that because I don't want to keep drinking all night. Um, uh, uh, Mike was saying he started with Scratch Live and on to Serato. I know guys that, that took forever to leave Scratch Live. They loved Scratch Live. And it got to the point where they got new equipment and it wouldn't work with Scratch Live. And that's when they made the switch over to Serato DJ. So um, that's a good example of something that works. If you like it, roll with it. Um, it's just up to each and everybody here. Um, I think dedicated all-in-one controllers will be replaced by controllers that allow for plug-and-play operations, operating systems, uh, bring a mobile device that you can operate. That's what I think, too. I kind of think that instead of walking up to a device and putting a thumb drive in with your songs, I think you're going to be able to take your phone or a tablet, whether it be a solid wire or some sort of wireless, and then that is going to work so everybody can walk up to the same piece of equipment, use their software with it with that equipment, and it's not going to be any different. So, like, you're going to have your tablet or whatever, your phone, with your Serato software, and I'm going to have my virtual, and someone's going to be record box, and they're all going to just be able to, what I call plug and play. That's what I think. I don't know when it's going to come around, but that's what I think. Because, like I said, a lot of the tablets and phones now are powerful enough to do that. Um, I have proven that uh, because... Hold on here. I do have this here. This is my Microsoft Surface Go. And the Surface Go is the slowest and smallest processor of all of the Surface tablets. And this is a Windows computer in tablet form, okay? So I have virtual loaded on this. Uh, just testing the other day, I put an adapter over here that let me uh, both do power, if I want to do power, and USB from this controller, the SB3, onto here, and I was playing from the cloud, DJing on virtual, hooked up to the SB3, and nothing else. Um, it isn't exactly the most ideal situation, but this would be an example of the beginnings as this becomes better, 
this is, like I said, you're going to have a controller I plug in. I, I, again, don't have to have it powered. I can have sound coming out of here, you know, a solid wire to a speaker. And I just have this. This is going to be running off this as battery. So if I want to just power this, I'm doing that whole circle, circle of stuff there without anything else. So that is something, like I said, imagine going to gigs with that. Uh, if you want a keyboard, you just pop your keyboard out and you start working. Um, you know, go, you know, put your stuff back in a car, maybe go sit on a bench and work on some stuff, just fold it up and work on some stuff uh, back again. And that's where I think the future is going to go with a lot of this stuff. Um, I, I just really think that that's, like I said, this, this next generation is leaning that way. So I hit some more questions here before we're almost out of time here. Um, let's see here. I think the price of implementing operating systems and hardware will go down. PC storage occupation less. I would agree with that. Uh, James goes. I actually not tried Recordbox. I'm gonna have to give it a go. It's worth. It's worth looking at. There are things that it can do that others can't. There's things that it can't do that others can. Um, it's one of those ones that's really come a long way quickly. Their 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 programming and coding staff has put in overtime. There's, as we used to say, they, they, they spent some time in the woodshed. That means you spent a lot of times working on something, you, you know. Um, but yeah, um, like Mike says, I started with the other software but made the right choice. In job. Are you talking about this software, Mike? Did you make a switch from it? Megaseg. Uh, okay, so we're almost down at the top of the hour. I hope this helped tonight. Um, like I said, the whole thing came about the fact that now that Virtual is offering uh, keyboard mappings for other other software. Uh, I think that's interesting because that's now uh, uh, makes transitions. It makes you know using multiple things. It really is starting to unify some of these things because they basically all do the same thing. If you're a basic mix DJ, you're going to be doing the same thing no matter. Because I always tell people, um, mixing is not about the software. It is not about the software. It's about you taking one song here and one song here and putting them together through matching, blending, and mixing from the center. And all DJ softwares do that. What they do beyond that with certain things or the way you prefer the workflow to be would then tailor you to certain softwares over other ones. But they're still going to do the exact same thing. Um... Um, yeah, someone here says, I wish they would come out with something that does it all. I'm running uh, off different software right now. Uh, what different software are you using? I'd like to be kind of curious about which ones you use there. Um, uh, like I said, because I have friends that will that'll use... They have a, One of the odd things is is that there, there are certain karaoke softwares out there that will hold uh, uh, singers' names and singers' songs and a lot of that stuff better than the DJ software will. And that's why a lot of guys lean towards the karaoke software because it is tailored towards that repeated customer coming back the next week at that venue singing the same song. Uh, and you can set things like uh, they want this much echo, they want it sped up, the slow down, all that kind of stuff. And that's something that, like I said, a lot of the guys that lean toward karaoke can't find those detail -y things in other softwares. Um, I think the industry made it easier for everyone to DJ these days. I actually started back in 78 with Technique 1200s. Um, uh, with crate digging. I was talking to somebody the other day about uh, there was a, a place that we used to eat lunch at here in the city that uh, you, you would go to that area of town and there were two record stores there and you would eat it, uh, go to one record store, grab a bite of food at this place and go to the other record store and this past year during COVID that food place shut down and we were talking about how you would spend hours in a place and come out with like five songs and now you can go to a, a website and click on a folder, go do some something else while it downloads a hundred songs so the whole process of that is very different um but it's things change that's all you know you there's nothing you're going to do about that um my mate says yeah it takes a good ear and eye to hear the best i to read the crowd um uh that's what it is karaoke software and the dj software um virtual does i, I think virtual does karaoke very well but like i said when it comes to those names and lists and stuff. I have friends who I, I couldn't tell you the name of the software they use, but when they explained to me what it can do and what they need it to do each week during these things, I was like, "Oh, okay. I I don't do karaoke, so I never I never would have thought of that." So yeah, mostly video DJs for me. Video DJ is great with that. What about Serato? 
Uh, Serato's good. That was what somebody earlier was talking about. Mix Emergency um, <clears throat> does um, some of the video stuff. Uh, if you use virtual, definitely go and get the um, uh, telemedia and televisual. They do a lot of effects and overlays. That includes text uploads, all kinds of stuff. I use them really basic where if I'm DJing video somewhere, I'll put my logo in one corner, the venue's logo in the other. Uh, my logo is a flipping, repeating uh, thing and, and stuff like that I can put in there. Um, it's also really good for, um, uh, I have mine set to do visual things that are on beat when I play an MP3. So stuff like that for video is pretty good there. Um, uh, Thank you. Appreciate that. Everyone's saying thank you. Um, uh, some people trying to get away from the karaoke. It's it's a weird time now. We're all trying new things. Holy crap, it's at the top of the hour. I didn't realize how late it was. Um, I want to remind you, uh, if you're watching live right now at 10 p.m., like right after the show in like two minutes, uh, you're going to stay here on uh, uh, YouTube.com forward slash Disc Jockey News, and there's going to be wa uh, a video there uh, that was pre-recorded with uh, uh, Howie Darkstar, Ryan, uh, uh, Brian S. Reed, and Jay Brennan talking about uh, why school dances have changed. And I think that's something that, you know, if you ever do any of those, go and hear that conversation. I think it's going to really help. Um, I want to cut out before I cut into their show. So again, thank you guys. I always want to, I appreciate everybody who tunes in and everybody watches it on demand afterwards. Thank you. Again, I would love your input on stuff you would like me to cover and also take a look at stuff that I've done in the past. I've done a boatload of videos uh, over on, on Disc Jockey News. Literally, uh, we counted, I've done over 500 and been a part of 500, over 500 videos on Disc Jockey News and very blessed. And this show is one of my favorites because I get to like connect right with you guys chilling out here and stuff. So until next time, uh, there may not be a show next week because I have special events next week that I have to prepare for, or like really crazy stuff. Uh, but the week after that, uh, that would be the 20th, I'm probably going to do another virtual DJ show. So please tune back in them. Uh, click like and share the video if you can because that helps it reach out to other people and they get education too. So until next time, as I always say, take care of yourself uh, and more importantly, take care of each other because it's a crazy world out there. God bless and good night.